Hey everyone, and welcome back to our Orboot and Rust and RISC-V hacking streams. So today, uh, we want to pick up what we started two weeks ago, where we did an analysis of the vendor's DRAM initialization co code for the Vision 5.1 board, uh, which is featuring the JH7100 SOC. And because we do not have documentation on the DRAM controller, we just took that code and rewrote that in Rust now. So yeah, I've been doing this uh, over the two past weeks now. Um, well, actually, no, not even that long. Um, so yeah, I've uh, taken last week off, as you may uh, have remembered. And well, um, we always looked at uh, this image here, right? So yeah, let's uh, let's have a look at that again. So uh, we we started off from here. Uh, this here is uh, what the original vendor's uh, boot flow was with uh, the components they provided. Uh, which were already uh, pre-flashed onto the Vision 5 board. And so we started to gradually rework that. So yeah, last time uh, where, where we started was at this point where we already had the first stage from the vendor's code. They called it second boot. We call it BT0. doesn't really matter too much. Uh, that is now rewritten in Rust. So yeah, we, we got one crab here. And now I will present you this point where we now have the DRAM init code, the second part, also rewritten in Rust, so we get another crab here. And that means uh, we can now jump to a payload which is coming from DRAM, because we can load it there and then run it from there. So that payload could be the OpenSBI that we already have uh, in our flash part on the board, or it could also be anything else. Um, so yeah, that's what we're going to start with today. And then I will walk through uh, the changes that I have made or how I've actually reworked the C code into Rust. Um, but first I want to look at some uh, news again for a moment. So uh, first of all, um, this one here. So if you are living in Europe, you maybe know the event or also from abroad, um, there is uh, a yearly or annual event which is called FOSDEM, the Free and Open Source uh, Software Developers Europe Meetup. Um, yeah, it's already been there for I don't know how many years. Uh, I've been attending the last uh, past few years and I've uh, contributed a few talks there already, um, mainly to the uh, firmware de development room. So we have one for like firmware bootloaders and you know, uh, sort of everything around that. Um, it's, it's a bit of a mixed uh, room. And so, yeah, this year is now uh, the call for participation, uh, which is now open until uh, December 10. So yeah, still uh, another 10 days remaining if anybody has something to contribute. Um, I will put the link again in the show notes. Yeah, uh, it, it's not much here, so it's not really important to read this right now. It's like, uh, you know, um, when, when the call for paper uh, ends, when the uh, dev room will be held. So. Yeah, this one here is on February 5, so that is the Sunday. Um, FOSDEM is always like over a weekend. So yeah, this is the Sunday. Um, and at the same day, we will also have the uh, open source firmware uh, dev room. Um, and the day before, on the 4th of February, there will also be a Rust dev room. So if you're interested in that, um, you know, the, all the uh, calls for participation or papers or, you know, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> Here it's participation. Uh, they are open now uh, and you will find them on fostem.org slash 2023. Um, yeah, this, uh, this year is also a reference from there. And yeah, I will post the link here. Um, then another thing. So I've already mentioned that before. There is now a uh, group. So this one here is called a task group. Uh, for uh, developing Risk Five, so there are like multiple uh, such groups, and this one here is for the Platform and Runtime Services, uh, or PRS for short. And that group has been meeting a few times already. So I think this year was now the third or fourth meeting, and I've just attended that. That was yesterday. And yeah, so there were uh, quite some uh, very very interesting uh, discussions here. Uh, for example, Lucha has uh, presented uh, some changes uh, for the specifications and the specification 
of PRS. There is like, uh, for example, a, a list of uh, different firmware implementations and things like that. And um, yeah, he proposed changing that a bit because they were uh, mainly referring to, for example, OpenSBI as being like the reference implementation. However, at the same time, there is also things like Rust SBI, for example, uh, which we are also using or going to use again here in this uh, stream um, at some point. Uh, yeah, so yeah, we will get back to that. Um, yeah, so yeah, there is now a change request open. Um, so Luja's message here is, is a bit longer. So this here is like the discussion thread of the meeting. Um, and here is like, you know, the full at length, the explanation, uh, which is then eventually showing up here in a very small uh, pull request, which is really just changing the wording here a bit. So this is for like, you know, changing uh, OpenSBI being the reference implementation to a list of implementations introducing uh, SBI. So yeah, um, I will also post the link to that. So this one here uh, for the meeting agenda. Now, another thing, and that's why I was actually off last week, um, I visited Michael Engel in Bamberg. So he's teaching there at the university and he's giving courses on operating systems engineering, uh, also a bit of virtual machines, uh, microkernels, and uh, his students are quite curious. So yeah, uh, he invited me to tell them a bit about the Orboot project. And so I did, I gave them like a bit of an introduction uh, where the project came from and so on. Um, and then at the same time, uh, we, we also met a few other people in the faculty. And one of the professors, she was saying that, well, there is a hackerspace in Bamberg. Uh, in Bamberg. It's called uh, Backspace, <laughs> bit of a pun there. Um, and well, they would also be uh, curious to hear something maybe. So I said, okay, I can go there and give a small talk. Um, and so I did. So yeah, I introduced Backspace uh, a bit to uh, Rust and microcontroller. So, yeah, I actually have a bunch of microcontrollers myself, um, which are uh, based on RISC V, uh, like this one here. So this is from WCH or Windship Head, and they, uh, you know, have this thing and also a few others as development boards now. So I think this here is um, something somebody else designed. That's uh, the model that I got, and there are a few others, and they actually have some at Backspace because Michael gave them to you know, the people there and said, well, uh, maybe that's interesting for you. And so, yeah, now I give them a bit of an introduction of uh, what they could do with that uh, and writing firmware in Rust. So, yeah, essentially I gave them a, a similar introduction to uh, what I did here at some point where, you know, I talked a bit about the language Rust itself and then the abstraction that we have from the Rust Embedded Working Group around the uh, pack, the peripheral access crate and the hell hardware abstraction layer and essentially how those uh, layers pile up here. Um, yeah, I will also put a link to uh, that in the notes. And um, I also created this repository here. So yeah, you can see this here is from uh, just last week. Uh, so yeah, I made a, a small demo. Essentially, it's just, you know, um, setting up some GPIOs, uh, doing a little like LED blinky thing um, and writing something to the UART. Uh, which is along the lines of uh, the meaning of life is to rewrite everything in Rust. That's the message. Yeah, just for the fun of it, of course. So yeah, now with that, um, let's get back to our work here. So yeah, we are now in this stage and the question is, how did we get here? So yeah, I took the uh, DRAM init code that we analyzed last time and then really just rewrote uh, all the statements there. So as you can imagine, it's not very pleasant to do this by hand. So what I essentially did was just regular expression, search, replace, search, replace. And that didn't even take that much time. So I really just started that on uh, Saturday, um, you know, when, when I was actually at Backspace. So yeah, you know, I just started doing some replacement, uh, replacements there. Um, and then I finished that up on uh, Sunday in, uh, in the evening, you know, when I was uh, getting back by train. Um, well, and uh, then I sat down again here, uh, like on uh, Monday, like in the evening, uh, and I tried it out, made another few adjustments, and voila, it was working just fine. However, um, 
I did find something and also reported that. So yeah, in the vendors code, the series like on uh, GitHub, the star five tag jh 100 ddr init repo, um, that's exactly the code we looked at last time. Um, so yeah, I uh, found something, I also reported that here. Um, there is a bug in uh, one of the lines here that's in the register configuration. Um, so uh, let's have a quick look at that. Um, a very typical thing that you would do in uh, hardware initialization is you read the value from a register and then you write back an updated value. But you need to read the first value, uh, the uh, initial value first um, so that you know you can actually do a meaningful update. So you need to know what's already in there, right? So you only want to change uh, some certain bits. And yeah, I mean, it's, it depends a bit on the uh, exact instruction set. I think um, they may also introduce that for risk five at some point where you can you know just poke uh, individual bits. But here in this case, we still have to follow this pattern. And uh, well, you know, of course need to be very uh, careful to write back to the, uh, the right register. And what happens here is um, this is actually writing to the wrong register. So it's it's reading from this year. It's like uh, some base address plus 4096 plus 642 shifted by 2. And here it's 2048 plus 642 shifted by 2. So yeah, that's a bit off. Um, so what essentially happens here is some random data ends up in a, uh, some other register um, I don't even know what that other register would be for. Um, we might find that somewhere in a list. Uh, but yeah, as, as you recall, we don't actually have any data sheet or manual on that DRAM controller. Um, however, what we do have is quite some comments actually, and we saw that at some point before. Um, another thing, uh, last time we have not looked at the um, full source code actually. So we intentionally just looked at a subset uh, but I also skipped uh, like two or three uh, large functions even. Um, so yeah, that's also something I want to get back to today. And uh, uh, that is what, what we would start from. So yeah, we'll show the C implementation and then side by side the REST implementation instead and then we can compare a bit. Um, yeah, I just want to point out another issue here because currently uh, building uh, the vendor code here uh, requires a specific RISC-V tool chain. So that requires the one from Sci-5. Uh, that's also the one I had to use uh, for building this year. Uh, well, and then <laughs> I uh, wrote a comment down here. Well, I'm rewriting this year in Rust now, and it looks like people are being quite happy about it, uh, replying with rockets and ta-da emoji. So yeah. Um, now let's look again at the code here. So. Uh, there are a few directories here, and one of them is DDR5 CFG, so that's the configuration. And if we look at that, there is this one, a very large file. So if you look at the scroll bar here, it's very small, uh, actually, so or very long, actually, right? So it's literally just write data to register, write data to register, write data to register, like a gazillion times. Uh, if you scroll down to this, you get to line uh, almost 2000, so this year is 1996. Um, and then there is a bit of uh, code that is now, uh, I think it's like commented out or something. Um, well, there is an if def here. It says GDDR training none uh, without an E even. I think this is actually uh, completely inactive. Um, yeah, at least I haven't seen anything like uh, this year or whatever. Uh, I mean, those are conditionals for uh, printing, but um, yeah, I don't know. It's, it's a bit strange. Uh, anyway, I think this is uh, never used. So yeah, this is like one of the large functions. So I replaced that one here. And if you look at this here, so there is this base address, which is always the same. That is a parameter to the function. And then there is like register, let's say this one here, 1522, 1528, and so on uh, down to the bottom and all those are defined in some header file and depending on the specific DRAM part you know you would choose either this or that header file um, so yeah effectively you would you would write very very uh, part specific data 
and you can only really understand that you know if you have the full documentation and you're actually into all of that stuff already so as i told you i'm not ready um i have looked at DRAM just uh once for the uh d1 uh, soc implementation for our boot where i translated some other code again uh, also from c at that point uh luckily i had a c code because somebody else already translated that from assembly code yeah but other than that um yeah, i really have no clue how all of that works it's apparently also quite complex given just you know the number of registers here and so yeah this is one of the functions i reworked um then there is uh this one here it's sort of the same thing it's just a bit of a different naming here uh but yeah you, you can see it's uh, the same pattern like write data to register write data to register straight down to the bottom where it's line uh 392 so we're now already at uh 2400 lines almost right and what was it was it 3000 in that one i already forgot yeah, okay, so we're at 2,400 lines now. And then there was this uh, other function here. So this is the only file in use. Those are not there for different parts. So this one here is another bunch of lines. This one here is a bit um, different. So this is where you see this pattern of reading a value, writing back an updated value. And here we actually do have some comments. So now here it says, for example, uh, RD LVL VREF. I guess it's like read level of uh, voltage for reference. And here the, uh, the register is like register 590, right? So yeah, this has some more semantics. So somebody could now walk through and you know replace uh, all of those things here uh, with a more semantic meaning uh, than you know, just having a number. And uh, yeah, this is um, not that long actually. So this here is like, I don't know. Oh, well, it's, it's still quite long. This here is 687 lines uh, up to here. Yeah, as you can see, there is also quite some stuff coming it out. Um, yeah, and then there is like a bunch of comments, a lot of like if one. So yeah, if, if one just means this here is included. So this is like a bit of a hack in uh, C for including or excluding code. Like if you write if zero here, it would just be ignored, right? So it's like uh, a, a very handy way of uh, commenting things out without actually commenting them out. Um, <laughs> yeah. Anyway, so yeah, that's all the stuff I took. And well, how does that all come together actually? So that's also what we looked at. There is this file here, boot main.c. And in boot main.c, we see there is a ton of other things happening also. Uh, but the actual DRAM in it is somewhere, uh, good question actually, what was it? This year, right. So this function in it DDR. So this is where, uh, you know, they set up a bunch of PLL. So that's like um, face loop something. I always forget that. And then there is clocks. So this here is for the clock setup. Uh, yeah, this code here above is just commented out for some reason. Um, I, I mean, there are some comments, like it depends a bit on the DRAM controller's clock. It's like if you go with like 400 megahertz or 800 megahertz, you know, you would either use this or that clock divider. So the clock divider is like, you know, to um, usually uh, you, you just uh, cut things in half, right? So that's very simple to do in hardware in a sense. Um, so if you want to like, if you want to just have half the clock, you know, it's, uh, you would set a divider of two. That is what that macro here is doing. And so I had to translate also a few macros besides those large functions that we just saw. Yeah, uh, there's this here. Here you see this if zero. So if zero means this co code here is just not in use at all. So I commented that out also. Um, yeah, then here is where uh, these fancy functions are being called uh, with a few macros again. So those macros are, as it turned out, actually the same ones that are also used here for some reason. Um, I don't know why they have to be used again. Maybe they don't even have to in, you know. Anyway, so yeah. Now, after all of that here, 
uh, we found this here, which is just a DRAM test. It also prints test down here uh, to show like the progress. And now let's compare that to the code that I uh, now have in Rust. So yeah, let's go back here. So uh, yeah, here again, we're back in my terminal uh, with the uh, UART on the right hand side. So this here is like minicom where we get the UART's output. And now let's switch back to a different tab or, or window, whatever. So yeah, this here is now uh, essentially replacing that uh, function that we just looked at, um, except yeah, that I have a few more print statements here uh, and I, you know, factored out a bunch of things. So yeah, the actual things we're doing here, let's uh, walk through very quickly. So this here is like the clock setup. So this is like the PLLs and the clocks. Um, then we have these few functions here. So this is DRAM PHY, DRAM PI and DRAM PI start. I just you know, retain the names of uh, what we had before in the vendor code. I just put them in different files also so that, you know, they don't pollute this one file here. Um, and they could be reworked a bit. So I found a bunch of things, for example, which, uh, you know, somebody could optimize a bit um, to maybe shrink down the code. For example, there is a bunch of registers which are just uh, filled with zeros. And so if you write that for each and every register, uh, you know, instead you could just iterate in a loop and yeah, just uh, do it for a bunch of registers and a range. Um, yeah, so this year is now for the first five part. Uh, then it's setting up some uh, some clock again. So this thing, which I told you, is also called uh, already before here. Um, and uh, then it's running this year OMC in it. That is the same thing as the Orboot in it. I just went with OMC for like orbit memory controller. I think that's what Denali just calls their memory controller. Um, and then we do the very same thing again for the second DRAM part. And eventually we run a DRAM test. And the DRAM test is really also just the same as in the C implementation. And now let's have a quick look at uh, those functions, uh, what they look like in Rust now. So let's start, um, let's start with the DRAM clocks. So the DRAM clocks are really just you know, those bunch of lines here, it's, it's really just calling out into a few functions. And all those functions do is really just read a register again, write back some value. Um, so if we look at this one here, for example, assert reset gen uh, RSTN DDR5 AHB. So I also just, you know, retained that from the vendor code. So if you uh, look at that, uh, this here is what's happening, right? So we read a value from a register, we write back an updated value, and well, there is a status bit here, so we just keep polling uh, until the uh, status bit is set, um, and then we're happy. So yeah, uh, in a very similar fashion, uh, this one here, and I think it's even all in the same file, so I put that in our init.rs where we already had very similar code actually. Uh, also for setting up the other PLLs, for example, that's uh, what we already did for uh, the first part of the init code anyway. So as you can see, it's, it's all very straightforward and simple. Um, so I, I want to look into each and every one of those now. Um, yeah, if we want to look at the DRAM5 uh, init, for example, yeah, this is like the, I don't know, 2000 long line thing that we also had in the uh, and the C code, yeah, it's just that instead of having a separate header file, I also put the constant definitions here. So if you look at the above, so there is a const whatever data equals and then a bit pattern. So this is exactly what you would find in the header file. Um, sometimes it's looking a bit funny, like in this case where it's sort of shaping a T or a dagger or cross, whatever you want to call it. Uh, but that's really just coincidental. So there were some comments on, you know, what the registers actually are, like this year, for example. Um, and then there were some where, you know, there were no comments, like here in this case, for example, and these are all just filled with zero. So yeah, this is all zero, all zero, all zero. And this is, uh, you know, a very easy candidate for refactoring. Uh, it's just a matter of doing it. And as you can see, I'm just scrolling a bunch until we uh, hit the next part where we have uh, named registers again. 
and then we scroll up and then we see something similar again um, so yeah and then name registers and again this sort of stuff here and I actually put a comment up here so about 75% you know I just grabbed for it about 75% were really just all zero registers um, I mean there's also some of the named registers being set to zero like this one here for example but yeah I, th I think you get the point so yeah, um, we came from here. So yeah, we, we could look at the DRAM Pi. As you can imagine, it's sort of the same thing uh, and similar with DRAM PI start. And this DRAM PI start, that's where I actually found the bug with the uh, wrong register being uh, written in the vendor's implementation. So in our code, it's already fixed. And I actually know that uh, people were reporting stability issues on the platform. And it could be actually related to this here. I don't know. I mean, it could be for two things. Uh, one, there is now one register that doesn't really have the value it should have. And then there is another register, maybe, which get the value it shouldn't have. So yeah, that is uh, quite quite some potential for bugs. And as you, as you can imagine, if you write like a few thousand registers, um, it's, it's really hard to tell if you get that right. So it's, uh, it requires a lot of thorough um, review Anyway, so yeah, the last thing I want to look at is the, well, the second last thing actually, um, is the OMC in it or orbit in it as the vendor called it. Uh, that is this one here. So this one takes three base registers, um, which is quite important. Um, we can, yeah, let, let's actually, so later I will also show you another file uh, where I started to document a bit the register ranges and you know sort of like what the register blocks are. Um, yeah, let's let's first get this here through. So yeah, you, as you can see here, it's once again just writing some values to whatever register, nothing documented. Uh, there are some comments in some places here. Some things are commented out. Um, this here is like it looks a bit like it's uh, polling for reset or something. I don't know. Um, yeah, then there is a bunch more ma magic values, magic values, magic values, a bunch more magic values. Um, now here you can see something which is interesting. So this is read PI. So I made that a handy function for reading, you know, from the offset for uh, this part. That's also where we have an init function for, and then it's updating those registers. And could be, it could be that those are some of the registers initialized to zero, and then at this point actually being filled out. Um, yeah, I, I, don't, I don't know for sure. I haven't really looked too much into that. Um, it would require some more effort uh, to be put into that. So if, if you're curious, that is maybe something to look into. Yeah, a, a bunch more values here. And that's already it for that function. And now I want to look at the DRAM test with you very quickly, because that's really very, very straightforward and simple. Uh, so I split this up in two functions. One of the functions is this one here which is just writing a value reading back the value and then comparing the value which what should have been written to the register and for that i really just give it like the number of the register and the pattern to write and now iteratively in a loop we do this in four random locations each so this year is at like uh, so this year is starting from uh, the very first byte. Uh, this here is uh, actually we're we're doing this in, in the same. Uh, so this here is in the, in the same spot. So this is always the same register, uh, getting different values, and doing the comparison. And then I'm also printing the progress just like the vendor does. I just wrote that in a bit more uh, elegant way, maybe. Um, I could also, so in Rust, there is also uh, some helper function for this here. So you can also say you go in steps of four. Uh, I could do that. Then I would just need to rework this here a bit. And I could uh, remove all the multiplications with four, uh, e except for here where I'm saying plus one, um, which is because we're starting at zero. And so, you know, the last register. It's actually not this one here, so this here is not inc inclusive. So it starts at uh, it ends at seven quad f, 
uh, which would mean we would never uh, hit this here. And if we were doing the same comparison as here, we would already print the progress for the first megabyte when we reach the first byte, which is a bit weird. So yeah, I'm doing this plus one here. Yeah, it's, it's just one way of writing this anyway. So yeah, um, I want to look at that documentation I mentioned with you. And that is the, I think I call it like DRAM lib RS, right, this here. So this is where I documented everything I could figure out so far. So the uh, memory controller itself, uh, it starts at 11.00 quad zero. So that's like the base address of the whole thing. And now from that, uh, at well, zero offset, um, there is this here, the first configuration part. And then there is another configuration part uh, somewhere later, it's at uh, plus hex, uh, hex 10k, um, which is, I don't know, I haven't seen something like that before, but it's maybe just because I never looked much at DRAM. Uh, well, and then there is something which is a bit strange, so they call it security something. I, c I couldn't find uh, out what, I, what that should mean, really. So that is also in, in the same region as here. It's just off by hex 1k uh, for each of those uh, configuration base addresses. Yeah, if somebody knows, maybe you drop a comment somewhere uh, in the pull request that I made for Urboot. And well, there is this uh, second part here, which is now the Firebase address. So that is also um, at some offset from the uh, actual controller base address again. Or maybe I should actually write that here. So maybe I should write on C base adder here. So it's not related to the configuration that I, that's what I had for. So this here is at plus hex 820k uh, and 830k respectively. And now within that, there is also two parts. So there is this here uh, called PI and then the other one called Phi. Uh, and they're at their own offsets again, like 2,000 and 4,000 hex, respectively. Um, I put a length here uh, for phi. I think it's actually wrong because I'm saying it's like uh, 2K size. Um, so, yeah, first of all, this here should read 2K. So, this is definitely 2K. I mean, the, the last register would be one FFF uh, or, or three rather. Yeah, it would be three FFFF, F three triple F <laughs> for the PI part. Now for the five part, um, let's actually see, but I'm, I'm not writing the uh, largest address. I'm just writing the length here. So the length is still 2K. Let's have a look at uh, DRAM phi RS. Let's see what the uh, highest number of registers is here so it's like in line 2000 right could also just jump to it but whatever mm, so yeah this is almost 2000 registers so hex 2000 um well you know that is decimal 2000 and that is less than hex 2000 so yeah this here is just an assumption I guess it sort of fits. Anyway, so yeah, uh, let's now see this in action. So uh, what I will now do is I will run the make run command and make run will just, um, you know, uh, flash our uh, payload to the board. And for that, let me quickly turn on the board and we will see something on the right hand side again. Uh, yeah, so this is um, what is now happening with uh, what's running from flash. Now we'll say make run. and it's uploading so as you may also notice it's now going to take a bit longer so our initial uh just very first initialization code was like 5k in size and this is now uh, 32k so i just uh you know made it a bit larger so the actual code is more like uh, 24k so it's grown by like 400 percent almost and it's really just data right um, so it's, you know, just writing data to register. So that's yeah, nothing too genuine about it. Now let's see what happens. So on the right hand side, 
it says read from SRAM0 base. I, ju I just stopped it. So we're starting with orboot, read from SRAM0 base. So we're, we're reading this here. I, I just uh, put some more elaboration around this. Um, reading from the spy flash base, it's reading this here, uh, similar to what we have above here. And then the uh, RISC-V vendor and architecture and implementation ID. So yeah, these are the uh, special uh, registers that we have. And now comes our DRAM init code. So yeah, this is the first print statement that we just saw uh, in the code. Um, yeah, this is after initializing the clocks uh, after phase zero for uh, each uh, for each piece. I'm printing uh, a message uh, for phase one. I'm just printing that for the whole thing to be done. So yeah, this here is like a, um, a bit of a relic uh, from like debugging things. And well, now finally we're also running a DRAM test, right? So we're testing the first two megabytes here. When that is done, it says go to main. And now we see a lot of C's. And those lots of C's, they are coming from the second stage that we also set up in a previous stream. And well, let's also look at that now. So we go back to our main.rs file. We're here, right in the middle of it. Um, and so I will show you where I inserted something. So first of all, let's let's see here. This is where I'm printing the first output, right? So this is saying orboot. We, we get the crab emoji. And then we get the read from SRAM0 and read from spy flash and so on. And now comes our DRAM init here. So DRAM init is like everything we, we just looked at before. And then comes the interesting part. Now I'm copying data from, uh, this is actually wrong. So I'm copying data from spy flash to DRAM. That's good that we're recapping this here. So I'm just reading from the uh, base address of the main blob. So the main blob is now, um, well, actually it wasn't wrong. We are actually copying from SRAM. So <laughs> because that's what the MassRAM is doing. It's copying our code from this bioflash into SRAM, like the first, I think 32K or something. And then it's running that. And so, yeah, this is now actually copying from SRAM to DRAM. So main blob base, if we look at the definition of that, this is SRAM zero base plus 30K. So at like uh, 30K, this is where I now put our second stage. So uh, previously we'd put that at like 10K and it was sufficient because our init code was only 5K. But since our DRAM code now you know, just enlarge everything. Um, yeah, I had to put that uh, somewhere else. So yeah, anyway, so we're reading this here, um, just uh, four bytes at a time, right? And then we're writing this to DRAM base uh, plus the respective address. And DRAM base is this here. It's like a very large hex number, 10 quad O quad O. So yeah, and then we execute just from the DRAM base address. So we're doing this here. Uh, we're, we're saying transmute. That's how we do that in Rust. So this uh, treats this here a bit like, and I think it's like treating it like a C function a bit. And then we're calling it and we're passing those arguments. And that just means these are, uh, these are put in uh, certain registers, the A register, so argument register. So this here is A0 and this here is now an A1. So yeah, um, no, so this here is now just um, jumping to our own uh, second stage. Um, but what we could do now also is uh, instead of that, uh, we could jump to the open SBI that is now still in the spy flash. We just need to figure out where it is, right? And so what we then just need to do is instead of main blob base here, uh, we, we just need to write the base address for the uh, open SBI. So let's change that into OSBI blob base. And let's define that as being like const uh, OSBI blob base is a U size. 
Okay, let's spy flash base plus some value. So yeah, I just put zero here as a placeholder. Now we need to figure this out. And how do we figure this out? Um, well, we have our C code from the vendor, right? So we just look at that. Uh, let's go to the DDR init here and then look at boot. I think it's somewhere in the assembly file here. Uh, there was something like call boot main and then a jump to something called enter u boot. And that again would do this here. Mm -hmm. And it says default u boot adder. And now let's see what that address would be. Oh, whoa, that's defined in a bunch of places. Um, yeah, this could become a bit interesting now. So here it says like some very large address. That's that is like the this is the DRAM base address actually. Um, now this year. Where is that? So 19C0 quad zero. Um, that would be somewhere in, um, good question actually. Huh. Interesting. I know, is that still, is that still in the SRAM somewhere? So our SRAM is like 192, no, 128K per bank, we have two of those. I mean, it could also be a mistake here. You don't need to take everything for granted. Um, there is also, oh, look at this here. Load data, spy flash, default u boot adder and default u boot offset. Right, so let's look for that thing because this is where, uh, I guess this is where the um, where the blob would be loaded from and then default you would adder is where it's loaded to and so that would be hex 400 does that make sense so is that like the offset from huh well, we, we can look at the boot main.c again where it says load data in line 430. So that would be here. What does load data do? It takes the spy flash, that's like the base address, the destination address, the page, oh, okay. So this is a page offset. So now we still need to calculate a bit. So let's use our favorite calculator, which is Node.js. So we have hex 400, right? And now we take the page size. Here we have a function which is called read. And I guess read is aware of, no, it's, it's being passed to page size. So, and page size again is coming from spy flash page size. And that again is coming from somewhere else, uh, which is a bit annoying. I would assume it's just 512, uh, but let's be sure. So page size equals, oh, look at that. It's 256. So we get hex 400 by 256. So this is 256K. Now if we want to have that in hex, we would have 40,000. So yeah. So we put that number here. And let's see if it actually just works, right? Well, if it does, we should see go to main and then it would continue with just saying, hey, open SBI and so on. Yeah. Well, if, if that doesn't work, we, we still need to figure out a few things. Um, but then again, we don't actually want to run open SBI. We want to run our own SBI. Um, so yeah, we are just going to write that uh, with REST SBI as a library. And uh, yeah, but that is something for the uh, next video stream. And here we go, test, test, go to main and empty. So yeah, that, that hasn't really worked, I guess. <laughs> 
Um, let's see if we can figure out the reason why that wouldn't work. So we say OSPI blob base. Oh, I actually have some, some ideas. So yeah, we're, we're not loading everything here. So we're really just loading like 10 K and it could be that that thing is actually much larger. Um, so, I mean, we're in DRAM space now, right? So we have plenty of space. So let's read like a hundred K. Let's see if that does the job. If it doesn't, we can still increase the size again. Um, and if that doesn't work, well, I don't really mind to be honest because um, yeah, we're, we're just going to write our own SBI again. And then uh, we can take care of loading the actual U-boot payload. Well, where, where it says U-boot, that wasn't actually even U-boot uh, U-boot in the um, in the vendor's code because they actually have open SBI loading before U-boot. We can see that when we hit uh, the reset button again, right? So it does the DRAM in it, then open SBI, then U-boot. And here we go. Well, nothing happening. Oh well. Um, we can do a bit of a we can do a bit of a sanity check, right? So let's do that. Actually, I want to see what we actually find here. So I'm using the dump command here that I also put here. So we're going to dump 32. Um, I think it's like 32, uh, 32 times 32. So this is like uh, a bunch of bytes and we're going to dump that from the open SBI blob base address instead of SRAM zero base, right? So this here, and then we com we can actually compare that. So we had a we had a dump. I um, but I actually haven't dumped that. But we can uh, we can dump the the spy flash content, the entire thing, uh, over U-boot. I'm not sure if I've even done that actually. Um, I guess I have, I will have to look again. Uh, and then we can actually, you know, look at that uh, content and then compare it against uh, what we're now dumping. So yeah, we're now dumping to the um, UART and then we can see what we get. Okay, so we get like nine, three, F6, F6 something. Does that look like sensible? Well, mm, let's see. So let's let's look at the. So I have this directory here called Vision Five, right? And I have this uh, TFTP home directory. Is that where? I, no, this is not where I downloaded the vendors blob. Uh, I do have the dump of the mask rom. There is a directory called FW. What's an FW? Oh, look at that. Um, yeah, but this is just the recovery boot and second loader. Do I have something in U boot? Uh, no, I don't think so. It's not what we're looking for anyway. We're looking for the open SBI thing. Do I have open SBI here? Open, open something. I actually don't have it. Um, yeah, I would need to set up a bit of an FTP server again or TFTP rather. Or do I have that? I have this here. Oh, look, fw.bin. I'm sure it's something else. Uh, uh, let's have a quick look at that. Mm, I don't think that looks like what we're looking for. And it's even just eight megabytes anyway, right? So I'm very sure it's from something else because otherwise we should have like 16 megabytes. So yeah, this is some other file. I don't know what I did there. It was uh, a few months ago, apparently. Anyway, so yeah, um, then Let's see again. I have like 
Do I have some idea what else we can do or how we can make sure we got the right thing? Oh. No. Huh. Um. Well, we could think about like, let's have a quick look again at the DDR init. So this here, so this here is like the menu and so on. This here is boot main. So here it says UART in it, uh, then DRAM something. Uh, you would exec at NBDLA, whatever that is. Uh, boot from chip link, get boot mode. And by default, I would just continue with this here, right? And that would just return to what we saw in the assembly code. So this year, uh, we would then um, get to this part. Default uBoot adder. Yeah, and this is what the um, uBoot code has been loaded to. We could think about. Uh, we could think about checking again what the other code is doing. So there needs to be something um, where it tries to like, oh, I think it's like when, when it doesn't get any boot mode, it would default to something. So let's see what this is doing. Oh, of course, it's in a different file. It's in gpr.h, gpr.c. Okay, I don't know why that is in that file. It doesn't really make sense to me. So what does get boot mode do? Um, oh well, it's doing that thing, which is interesting. Uh, so it's reading values from GPIOs. Oh, I think that is looking at the buttons that we press. Okay, so we don't press any buttons, but here it says like boot from SPI one or four. It's either of those likely. Um, and well, boot from SP, uh, SPI again is up here. So whether it's one or four determines the mode. Oh, that is just the SPI mode. So how it's talking to the spy flash part, I guess. Uh, but it doesn't change anything about the like address it's reading from and yeah interesting interesting so what was boot from chip link again boot from chip link is like i think this is what is presenting us with a menu yeah, that's this year where it's counting like two, one, zero. And then if you don't type anything, uh, we would just continue. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So we are actually doing this here. Uh, so no, I, I skipped something. Okay, we're, we're here. So it would just return zero and return zero would just mean um, booting from spy flash, right? Like with a mode zero or something or mode one, one of those, one of those. Uh, yeah, this one here, this is for K zero. So yeah, default U boot offset. Oh, we could also do the following. Um, let's actually use the OSBI blob base and let's go back a bit. So let's say minus, uh, let's say minus eight, for example, right? So we also see if there is something right before us. And I would expect that to be either just Fs or just zeros that would indicate that we're not in the middle of something else. Yeah, that is something we can easily check. So let's see what happens there. So I would now expect to see something like 
zero 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 whatever nine three f six or just f f f f nine three and so on uh, let's see if we get that and if that doesn't happen um yeah i will just investigate a bit and come back to that next time so yeah um speaking of next time uh, I will visit Michael again next week uh, to uh, yeah, give a more thorough introduction to Orbit to the students. Oh, whoopsies. Um, that looks like we were actually somewhere in the middle of something. So now it's getting us 9B1787 something. Interesting. So I think we're at the... We're at the wrong base address. So yeah, let's let's calculate again. So it's saying default U-boot offset, right? And default U-boot offset was hex 400. And load data would take that offset plus the page size, which we determined to be 256 this year. It could also be that it's actually something else and I just didn't look thoroughly. Um, we also have that in here. Yeah, I think it's actually 256 because I recall it from looking at that previously. So let's look at what the read function here does. So we get spy flash, we get offset, page size. So spy flash is this. Uh, is something that is passed on here as the struct reference. So do we have like spy flash dot C like this here? And do we have something like a read function here? Like just read, 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 read. No. Oh well. I guess it's somewhere else then. What else do we have in SPI? Uh, we have SPI flash. We have well, we have cadence q spy dot read. Uh, cadence q spy dot c. That could be it. Or just spy dot c. No, I just wouldn't think so. That is an SPI slash whatever. Read, 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 read. Huh. Can Bim find this? Can you say go to definition? No. Oh well. Is there like. No. Where does spy flash come from anyway? So it's coming from here, right? So it says load data and then it's passing spy flash. And spy flash is what is returned from spy flash probe. This here. And that is what we would find in SPI somewhere. There is by probe.c. Oh, maybe we have the read function in there. So at least we have the probe function here. Read ID. Return flash. Flash SPI equals SPI. So where did SPI come from? Um, here, 
from this file setup something, um, which is again somewhere else. Whoopsie daisy. Well, that is in spy.c. Could be that the read function is also defined there, or it could be in here. Let's, let's see very quickly if we get the read function here. Oh, look, it says slash read equals by slash read mode. Or just by slash read mode. And, well, let's search for that again. That is in spyflash.c again. Okay, so let's look again at spyflash.c. Oh wow. This gets the read command, so I guess we should find something like, right, so here, we get this spyflash struct, we get the offset, we get a link, we get a pointer and we get the mode. And does that look like what we see in load data where it says spy flash read? We get the spy flash, the struct, right? We have the offset, we have the page size. So len is a part of page size. Uh, we get a pointer to the data buffer here and the mode. So let's see len here somewhere then times eight that is interesting so that would be oh the offset is actually the offset in bytes oh So do we actually need to say hex 400 times eight times two, five, six? Is that it? That would mean we're here. Hex 200,000. this let's see what could go wrong here so it's taking a while again to transfer so if you don't really know what those uh, things mean it's really hard to trace it um, as you could see and uh, yeah So yeah, uh, I already announced that. So yeah, I will also not be here uh, next week, uh, but then again in two weeks. So yeah, I got plenty of time to do some more research again. And what we're then gonna do is just uh, start writing our uh, REST SBI implementation. And we'll just do it based on the D1 SLCs implementation again. Oh, well, um, well, actually we're now in like somewhere in the middle of nowhere, I guess, because we're just seeing zeros here. So that is almost close to what I expected there. Um, yeah, I really don't know what's up here. Um, it could also be that, uh, huh, I'm not sure actually. I thought it would be sensible to have the blob at hex 40,000. So if we look at this here, 256K, so that's like decimal 260, whatever. Um, that sounded to me that it would be like their uh, first init code, then the DRAM init code, which are like 128K each. And then would come the uh, open SBI implementation. Oh, well, yeah, I will investigate that a bit more. Um, could also be that we're not loading enough data, but then again, we're loading like how much again? So first of all, let's 
let's change that back here to 40,000, even though that didn't seem to be right again. Um, Right, here you can see the step by function by the way that I mentioned earlier. So we're we're reading like a hundred K that should definitely be sufficient. And it could be more, but even if we read like five hundred K, uh that shouldn't be an issue either. I mean we, we can technically read like a few megabytes or something, right? So we we could do that. We could uh, like I don't know we can say like five megabytes, right? I mean, another thing we can do is, um, we, we can, we can dump more, right? Sorry. So we can also go like, so we take was OSBI blob base. I think that was like five flash base plus hex 40, right? So what we could also do is we could read from a few different offsets, right? So we could do this here, for example. Yeah, let's remove that. Uh, we can look at like 10K, 2K, 3K. So 4K is already what we have above here and see what we get there. Um, or do we maybe, I have some idea, again, it might be that they actually have a, a blob for the OpenSBI implementation somewhere. Um, let's have a quick look at the repositories. Uh, JH7100, uh, OpenSBI. Oh, look, releases. Now that is just source code. Uh, I mean, we, we could build it and then see what we expect, right? Um, could be that that's what we're looking for. Anything else? No, I, I think it was really just, um, we're, we're really just getting the wrong offset. I mean, we, we have the indicator that it's wrong because it's, you know, it looks a bit odd. Uh, that we get like some data bytes just before. Huh. Oh, what we could also do is um, we could look at their PDFs again, because I think they were explaining like how to restore anything if the firmware was broken. Um, I think that's actually a good idea. So let's look at the PDFs here. Uh, Store.pdf. So we have that stuff, but that's not what we're looking for. Um, what is mini flash? Oh, ah, that's the flash part with the, um, like the USB controller firmware, but that is something else. Uh, SD card default, what is SD card default? Oh, that is what they put on the SD card. Yeah, uh, for some reason they are putting a whole like UEFI and grub and so on in there, which we don't actually need. Um, where is the documentation that I was looking for? There's JH7100 docs, maybe it's in there. Let's look at the, oh, there is also bootloader recovery. I think we just look at that. Um, yeah, let's, let's look at the, let's look at the docs. Get status, do we have like, oh look, there, GPIO user guide, reference manual, whatever. I think the reference manual is something worth looking at, um, if that's it. Moving root file system, making file system, adding new file, compiling open SBI, compiling 
the U-boot. No, it's just U-boot and it's uppercase U and uppercase B. But open SBI is what we're looking for. Mm-hmm. Let's look at page number nine. U-boot, Lennox. There. fwpayload.bin. I have a I have a suspicion that that is actually Oh, I have a suspicion that they're actually including OpenSBI somewhere within U-Boot and so they would run OpenSBI from within U-Boot first and then jump to the rest of U-Boot. That could actually be. But then either way, um, we need to find where to put that or where to load it from. So what do they do here? Uh huh. Oh, and then I actually have another idea. Something else we can look at. Uh huh. Uh huh. That's just a bunch of screenshot, but nothing to help for right now. Does it say anything about like the flashing part? No, of course not. There is just another screenshot from when it's running. Um. I don't care about BusyBox or anything. Micro SD card. Oh, look at that. Oh, but this is like from within U-Boot. All of this is unnecessarily complicated, to be honest. Okay, there was the quick start guide. Let's look at the quick start guide. It might be that that is what we also looked at before, where uh, we actually saw about the restore the bootloader thing. Right, recovering the bootloader here. Hardware setup, software setup. So I think it's really just using that tool that we also use. Yeah, we got, so this is, uh, okay. This is now pointing to the RISC V open SBI fork instead of the uh, their own star five tag uh, fork. Um, does it print anything like? No. Are there any offsets documented in here? Yeah, we're just going to look at the JH seven one hundred recover tool, um, because that should actually tell us where. Where everything is written like yeah the JH7100 recovery tool is um, like it's a small tool that is interacting um, with the mass from so first it's loading its own payload to SRAM and then that is executed and then it's communicating with that tool again oh look at that uh-huh so this year is actually hex 40,000. So maybe we did the calculation right after all. Maybe we just didn't load enough data. Hex 40,000. Interesting. So yeah, this here, SF, this is like the um, spy flash uh, subcommand in U-boot. So where, where it says update, it's just writing from this memory address, this here, and then file size. Oh, do we actually get a file size somewhere here? Does it say like, oh look here it says the file size, so that looks like 87k, uh, that is for the DDR in it. Does it say anything for U-boot here? Oh, Whoa, look at this. This is like three megabytes. So maybe, uh, maybe this here now would actually just work. We're, uh, we're passing, uh, oh, we're just loading five megabytes. Now let's just see if that works. That would be amazing actually. Yeah, it's like five megabytes. You know, that's, uh, <laughs> that's also the size of a whole Linux system, like, you know, with like the whole kernel and all the 
um, like the user space tools that you need, like LS and cat and move and so on, and a bunch of bootloaders and so on. So we can uh, we, we can totally replace all of that U-boot stuff with um, just Linux boot. And that will make it also much, much easier to work with. And then we can put the CPU daemon in there that we also used earlier. And interesting, interesting. Now this is truly interesting. Do you see this here? One eight four five two something one eight four. This is reading the same at like. Oh well, we're reading from the same offset. And so this is now. This is now hex thirty k. Huh. So I haven't actually. Uh, here is the thing. I have not done any like um, update of U-Boot or anything on this board. So I only got what was uh, flashed before. So it could be that they were actually using this address. So let's just change <laughs> the 40,000 to 30,000 and see if now that just works. It could well be, it could well be. That would actually be funny now. Interesting, interesting. Um, what's also a bit interesting is that we get something a bit more uh, more here, but I think it's just omitting a, an initial zero byte here. Right, right, that could be. Because we're always just dumping like 32. But, um, oh, I'm not sure actually. What does the dumb command do anyway? Well, it's just printing. Oh, it could be that it's omitting some part. Oh, well, so yeah, that didn't work either. Um, oh, another issue could be, could be, it could be that we need to load this Ubu to some other address, right? So, In that case, instead of DRAM at, uh, base, let's actually see. So we get the, um, what was it? You boot default adder or something? Uh, I think it was somewhere, sorry. I think it was somewhere in the assembly file. Started as default you boot adder. Right. So what is what is default you would adder? That was this year. Oh, oh. We could use that address instead. It could be that that's actually the issue. It could be. So whoopsies. Um Yeah, that is also the like the typical DRAM base address that you find also on many ARM platforms, like eight, eight, eight thousand quad zero. Let's try that. Yeah, if that doesn't work, I would just um, you know um, proceed with something else for later. And uh, yeah, do some more research for next time. Yeah, it's just a bit annoying that it's taking so long, but then again, it's just like an annoying like 10 or 15 seconds or whatever. At least we do see progress, so that's always good. And so we get test, DRAM test done. And nothing. Oh well. Yeah, then we're going to cancel the operation here for now. I'm very sorry. We'll get back to that next time. Um, 
I want to mention another thing now. So you may recall that um, uh, I uh, saw this campaign uh, from Cypede. So Cypede are uh, one of the hardware vendors um, doing quite some interesting development boards. And so they uh, made one based on the BL808 SOC. So that's from Buffalo Lab. And so that's based on the C906 core. That's the same processor core as in the um, D1 SOC from All Winner. And so they, uh, you know, the, the campaign is fully funded and so on. They started sending out the, um, the boards. And at the same time, they also put some on AliExpress. So I also bought some of those. And I want to just show you them very briefly. So this here is one of them. It's uh, quite a large thing, actually. It's a, a large display. And on the back, we have the actual module. So it says Cypede MF ST40, uh, this thing here. So as you can see, it's uh, mostly uh, made for like uh, being a bit like a camera. And I also got a standalone version of that module again. So uh, like this one here. Uh, so this is really just the uh, tiny board with the SOC. So the SOC is that chip here in the middle. And then, well, there is a flex connector to the other side. And this is where we have the uh, two image sensors. And well, they are just behind those lenses here. Or maybe they are just the lenses. And, well, actually, the sensors need to be behind that. It's just, um, yeah, it's just covered well. That won't get any, uh, get any dust. So yeah, it's like when you have image sensors, you need to be very careful not to get any dust in there or anything else. So yeah, this is quite interesting. And as you may also see, um, it has a bunch of connectors, right? So there is like these connectors here at the side. And that is because there are a bunch of cores and a bunch of URIs actually. Um, I haven't really checked out the chip too much. Uh, but this year will also be a very interesting target for Orboot again. And uh, yeah, then as I already uh, said, I will be out again next week. So our next stream will then be again in two weeks. And that would be, let's see, calendar, calendar, uh, cal, deck, December, no. Uh, 2022 December. Uh, do I have to say 12? Oh, I need to say Cal and then 12. Hang on. Cal 2022 or 12 2022. All right. So it's the month first. Anyway. So yeah, today is November 30th, uh, then I will be live again on the 14th of December. And yeah, and then we see that we uh, start getting our Rust SBI to work. And um, yeah, then we just uh, try putting a Linux kernel in Flash directly. We then just load Linux and, uh, you know, we don't need to mess with anything like U-Boot again or whatever. So yeah, I'm really looking forward to doing that. And with that, thank you. Um, have a great time. And yeah, until next time. Goodbye.